Hi, and welcome to this section of the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to build upon what we've laid the foundation of in the last section, talking about matrices and the elements of a matrix and all of that stuff. We're going to continue learning about matrices, and specific in this section, we're going to talk about addition, subtraction, and multiplication of a matrix by a scalar. That's really important because it's a little bit different than multiplying a matrix by a matrix. Multiplying by a scalar just means you multiply the matrix by a number. A scalar is a fancy word that just means a number. That's really all it means. You'll see a lot of times in your book is a scalar multiplication. It just means multiplying by a number. So remember back from your basic algebra when you learned about a negative number. Okay, It was a foreign, crazy concept at first. And you had to learn how to add them. You had to learn how to subtract them. You had to learn how to multiply them. Okay, You had to learn all of those little rules that... Uh, Many of you guys that have been with me for a while learned it in part by watching the DVDs. You had to, to learn that stuff, and it was not something you were born with. So we're going to study how to add matrices and how to subtract them and how to multiply them by a number. Okay, We're going to go through these operations, just like you had to learn the basic operations of your exponents or whatever back, back before. And we're going to lay this foundation so that when you get to the more complicated stuff, it's not going to seem like a big deal. The good news is, and this is really, I do mean this with sincerity, Adding and subtracting and multiplying by a scalar by a number really is what that means. is very, very simple with matrices. It's very, very simple. You're not going to have any problem with it at all. Okay. To the long and short of it is to add two matrices together, they have to be uh, have to have the same number of rows and columns. Okay. They have to have the same number of elements, the same number of rows and columns, same order as what it means, same size and shape. And in order to add them or subtract them, all you do is you take the elements, the corresponding elements in the matrices, and you add them or subtract them. That's really all it is. You're looking at the corresponding ones, and you're adding and subtracting. Now, your books usually aren't going to phrase it that way. They're going to phrase it in a different way. I'm going to write that down just so when you're reading your book, you won't be lost as to what they're talking about. But that's really all it is. You're looking at the, the corresponding elements in the exact same positions, and you're adding them or subtracting them. That's how you do addition and subtraction. In, uh, in matrices. So for matrix addition, okay, this is what you need to know. Two matrices of the same order, let me go ahead and underline this right here, can be added. Okay, That's exactly what I said a minute ago. They have to have the same size and shape. Remember, the order is just the number of rows and number of columns, so they have to have the same order, the same number of rows and columns in order to add them. So all you do is you just add corresponding entries. Okay, And the way you're going to see this written in your textbook in sort of in math language, okay? If you have a matrix that you're representing by the letter A, this, this letter A represents an entire matrix, okay? And you're adding it to another matrix that you're using to represent by a, by a different letter B. So this is matrix A and matrix B, and you want to add them together. What this says is that they have to have the same order. They have to have the same number of rows and columns. Otherwise, you cannot add them. It just it cannot be done. Whereas before, you can take any two numbers and add them, you know, from, from basic math, from, from first grade math. You can take any number and add it to any no other number, no problem. Matrices, not true. You cannot add a matrix this big with a matrix this big. You cannot do it. It does not exist. That's really, that's really what it boils down to, okay? They have to have the same order. It means they have to have the same size and shape. And the way they'll write this down in math languages is looks like this. A, I sub J plus B, I sub j. Now let me explain a little bit the notation so that when you're looking in your book it's not going to be so foreign. This is matrix A, the elements of which are written as little a i sub j. This is row and column. This is just like what we were doing before when we're picking out the elements uh, along the row, the ith row and the jth column of matrix A. Matrix B has, has elements little b, again i sub j. What this means here, this i sub j plus b i sub j, all it means is this very fancy math language of saying if I'm looking at the same row and the same column, notice I have i and j here and i and j here. If I'm looking at the same row and the same column, I pick out the same row and the, the, ele the same element in both matrices is what I'm doing. At the ith row and the jth column, at the ith row and the jth column, I'm picking out the exact same element, corresponding element, 
um, in both matrices and I'm adding them together. That's why there's an I and a J and an I and a J. It's basically telling me I have to pull the same element out because it's the ith row and the jth column. I throw in the jth column. So I go off and I can do that for every single element and add to it the corresponding element in, in B. And once I do that, for every element, then I've arrived at the sum of these two matrices, basically. Now, for subtraction, I'm not going to write all this stuff exactly, you know, over again. Exactly uh, the same, because it's, it's, it's really exactly the same. So for matrix subtraction, Okay, you just subtract corresponding elements or entries, whatever word you prefer to use, corresponding elements, corresponding entries. It's the same thing as what's going on up here. Matrix A, you want to subtract from it matrix B. The only way you can do this is if these two matrices have exactly the same number of rows and columns, meaning that they have exactly the same number of elements in exactly the same positions. So you write this as A, little a, sub i, j, minus little b, sub i, j. Again, all it means is I look at whatever element I'm looking at in matrix A, at the i row in the jth column, I'm subtracting from it the corresponding element in B at the i row in the jth column. That's all this means. This is math speak of saying element, the corresponding element from A and B. I look at it and I subtract them, and I do that for every element, and I've arrived at the difference of these two things. Okay. So adding and subtracting matrix really is nothing more than adding and subtracting numbers. Okay. That's the good news. It's very very simple. That's why I was telling you. Now the final thing I want to write down for you before we go ahead and work some problems is. Um, if you want to multiply a matrix by a scalar, which again, don't get scared off by the term scalar. A scalar just means a number. Uh, multiply by one, or multiply matrix by two, or multiply it by five, or whatever. Okay? Uh, all you do, you just multiply. in layman's terms, you just multiply each element by the scalar. So again, it's very, very simple. So if you were going to uh, take the matrix A, let's say, and you were going to multiply it by a number, and let's say that number is the number C. It could be any number. It could be one half. You could be multiplying this matrix by ten. You could be multiplying it by negative five. You can multiply it by pi. Whatever. It's just a number. The number is is the letter C. We're going to multiply it together. So the number is is out in front, just like you were going to multiply, you know, three x. The number's out in front of the variable. So it's just that I'm generalizing it and I'm saying the the letter C is the scalar you're multiplying by. All you do is you take every single element. And the inside, I sub J, you go through all the elements, rows and columns, and for every one of them, you multiply by the number C. Okay? That's all you do. So when you're multiplying a matrix by a scalar, you look at every single element and you go through, and for every one of them, you multiply by the scalar. It kind of makes sense. To multiply a matrix, you must multiply by uh, every element by something if you're multiplying by a scalar. And so you multiply each element just like this. So adding and subtracting matrices and multiplying by a scalar, very, very simple. You look at the corresponding elements, you do the addition by element by element, and subtraction element by element. If you're multiplying by a scalar, which is multiplying by a number, you look at every element, you multiply by that number, okay? So in the problems that follow, just to get some experience with this stuff, instead of looking at the math speak over here, what we want to do for all the problems that follow is we want to find the following things. We want to find A plus B, we want to find A minus B, we want to find 4 times the matrix A, and we want to find 5 times A.